Hello YouTube subscribers, this is like the second part of this video because the first part I was rattling candy, but um, I'm re-editing this video. Um, we, today is January 17th, 2019. We are going to talk about the first month of recovery with my pineal sinus, mainly like the first week or two is where the big deals are and the pain was but anyway we're gonna talk about that and before I start I also want to include that at the end of this video I will probably show pictures of the progression over the first month of the cyst I didn't take pictures every week but pretty much for like about three weeks there's been photos once every every week almost so you'll see some pictures at the end, so if you don't like open wounds or anything, or blood or anything, don't watch the end of the video. But if you want to know about what I experienced over this past month, and what you may expect, because I got a, it starts with a C type of surgery where they leave the cyst open. I got that type of surgery, so your experience may be somewhat similar maybe totally different but let's jump into it which i will warn you at the end too about the pictures before i show them so a day after surgery i came home from the i well i came home from the hospital the day i had surgery it was an outpatient thing i was i was given two vicodin because we headed down to west virginia from the surgery and we came back to PA that later that week which wasn't a fun ride and I was kind of out of it but the day after surgery I was kind of a little bit in more pain which as you remember I talked about and the antibiotics stuff that I was on well what do you know a day after I made that video I pretty much got some symptoms which was diarrhea and stuff like that so I had to deal with cramping and stuff like that for like a whole plus a week. You may differ if your doctor prescribes you the same antibiotic or a different antibiotic. Your side effects may differ. But yeah, I had to deal with that. And the day after, I was most, the first couple days, I will say that due to being on pain medication, I was mostly sleeping. Which I would sleep on my side because again, for the first couple weeks, I could not sit in a chair like a normal person or lie on my back because it was so, it, it was painful. So what I'd recommend is you probably get one of them donut pillows for it. But the first day I mostly slept and we went to change my dressing and the first day I was also able to get a shower. And for your first day when you go to change the dressing, because for me, it was about a foot long, and they pack it in there pretty good for surgery to prevent bleeding. So, I will tell you that the first day is the most, one of the most painful changes. But when your caretaker goes to put in more gauze after they take out that long piece, they should no longer fully pack it in there. Which, didn't have to do that. But again, the first couple days I was sleeping, around day two three or four, I managed to, you know, be, in, be more awake and alert. I was still in pain, could not sit for long or nothing. So I went outside and walked. It was painful to walk. It was barely tolerable to do that. And we changed my gauze every day. And for the first couple weeks, the gauze, when the first week the gauze was mostly bloody and then coming into the week of Christmas it kind of started getting like a mucusy color which we went home for Christmas and if you're try if you have to travel during this pine idol sinus thing at least for me I had to stop a few times because it was so painful to sit in your vehicle even with pillows so fast forward to Christmas which I'll tell you something funny too. The day after I had my surgery, you would have thought the hospital would have called to see how I was doing and stuff. Nothing. But fast forward to the day after to Christmas, I was 
finally beginning to feel better because I was beginning to leak out more fluid, which you're going to. That's your body's natural process to healing. So I was able to sit at least on the donut pillow somewhat, but not for long. So that was an improvement, and that was a little over a week later, a week and a day later from my surgery. So that was a start. But anyway, fast forward to the 26th day after Christmas. I had a doctor's appointment while well, I was going to have one at 3.30. And we wanted to schedule it earlier due to the fact that we were coming back down to West Virginia. And they said you couldn't, we couldn't do that. We had to keep it at 3.30. But everything was good. And coincidentally, the surgeon calls up. Not the surgeon, but the receptionist calls me two hours before my appointment. So this pissed me off, and said, "Oh well, he's in, he's gonna be in surgery at three thirty. We have to schedule you for the for the twenty seventh tomorrow, the next day." I'm like, "Well, I can't do the surgery the next day because I'm going away." And they're like, "Well, then fine. You have to come in at least the following week after." And I'm like, "Okay." And the one thing that sucked was I was kind of upset because this guy wasn't my surgeon who did it. But come come later on that week, I was beginning to be able to sit a lot more, tolerate it a lot more. Still would have to take breaks and get up and move around. But I was beginning to feel a lot better as more fluid began to come out. Which again, that's going to be normal for you. I read that it's normal to have some fluid, but if you're bleeding excessively and there's an odor to it, strong odor to it and whatnot, get yourself to the doctor right away. At least that's what my paper said, that there was no odor, nothing. Which of the packing of my wound was not all that fun. It was really painful. I hated it. I hated every minute of it, and I'm glad I don't have to do it anymore. So come to the 2nd of January, after New Year's, happy new, happy belated New Year to anybody who watches this, by the way. Um, I went to my doctor, he took out the gauze, which I used my last pain pill. I kind of rationed my pain pills, so that way I could save it to my for my doctor's appointment, for my first doctor's appointment after the surgery, because, you know, I'd recommend you do that because you don't know if he's going to poke around in there and want to put it, stick anything in there or whatnot. You don't know. I didn't know if they were going to do that. So I rationed my pain pills and I took my last pain pill and it still was painful when he took the gauze out because I was so used to my mother doing it. You may be used to your caretaker doing it over a doctor, so it probably will be painful. And he looked at it and goes, wow, this looks good and all that. And just recommended that I just use a pad to put back there to catch any fluid. Didn't have to, was told at that point, which it had been over two weeks. It would have been three weeks the following week. It was over two weeks at this point. And I was told I didn't have to pack it anymore. I could shower, well, bathe. I like baths. I know that to the other people it may be disgusting. You know, you're sitting in your wet dirt. Well, I like baths. I was also told I can go swimming if I wanted to, but believe me, I wouldn't want to. And I was happy we didn't have to pack it anymore, but I had to use pads. So pretty much that week I was using a pad, but because the edge of the pad was rubbing up against my butt all the time I get a rash from it so what I'd recommend you do is if you are sensitive to that having a pad on for so long even though you change it if you are sensitive to the friction of it rubbing as you sit or walk or whatever I'd probably recommend which I ended up doing this I got to pens because you are gonna leak fluid even after you're done packing which happened to me and you know it hasn't stained my clothes because it's this fluid that I leaked is mostly clear stuff anyway, so it hasn't really stained my clothes, but I'd recommend you probably get a, uh, sorry about that, a scammer was trying to call me. I'd recommend that you get a Depend or something, or put antibiotic ointment cream on the area where you're getting a rash at from the friction of wearing a pad for the leakage. 
but pretty much at this point, from my doctor's appointment to now, there really has been nothing other than the leak in a fluid. It's mostly stopped now. I have to see the doctor at the end of this month, which makes four weeks from the 2nd of January, so I have to go back in four weeks to look at it. But pretty much at this point, other than having slight discomfort, I mean, it's not like it's killing me when I need to take any pain medication. But other than having slight discomfort, I would say I'm pretty much back to where I was before, excuse me, I had surgery. So the first week or so for me was their worst. It was the worst. It was so frustrating. It had again gotten to the point where I didn't want to do the packing anymore, but I had to push through it. I didn't want to do it. Which also, the funny thing is, is re if you remembered how I said the hospital didn't call me the day after my surgery like they usually do for somebody to see how you're doing, they coincidentally called me when I went to this doctor on the 2nd. <laughs> Over two weeks later, they called and said, see, saw how I was doing and stuff. Wanted to know how I was doing and stuff. It was kind of pathetic. But pretty much at this point, there really ain't nothing more going on other than, again, a little bit of discomfort. Obviously, I'm sitting while making this video, so I'm not really in pain anymore. I can sit. I kind of lie on my back. It's pretty nice at this point. And again, I have to go to the doctor here at the end of this month. So maybe I'll talk about that appointment of how it goes, which I'm seeing my surgeon this time around. So if you have to go back after your first appointment from surgery, if the first appointment ain't with your surgeon and you want to see your surgeon and they tell you you have to go back in like two weeks or four weeks or whatever, tell them you want to see your surgeon, which I did because I didn't, as I mentioned in my surgery video, I didn't get to talk to him after my surgery. But that's pretty much it. We are now going to remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Again, your experience may be different from mine, but I just wanted to get information out there to help somebody who's going through this since there ain't a lot of videos that talk about from the very beginning to the end of the pineal sinus thing that people are going through. Which I also want to point out that another thing that I've changed is I do shower every day now, which along with with showering and with taking pain pills, as long as you do that, you should be healing up greatly. I used to shower every other day, but I kind of had to do it every day now, even though I hate it. <laughs> Doing it every day to keep the area clean, push fluid out of there. But anyway, remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And we are now going to cut to... The pictures of my sinus as it progresses. So if you don't want to watch that, I recommend you click away now. Because the pictures are going to be shown now. Bye everybody and watch the pictures. Okay, hope you all can hear me. Thanks for coming to... Sorry about that, my phone rotated. Thanks for coming to the end of my video. Which I hope you can see my pointer here. As this will be important. But I'm going to briefly talk show you some pictures of what my incision looks like. Your incision may look slightly different because everybody's body is different, but here's an idea as to what it may look like. So it is too much info TMI pictures coming. So here's December 19th, the two days after surgery. As you can see, it's starting to become healthy, healthy pink around the edges here. If you can see with my pointer, Nice healthy pink color. Hope you didn't see that. That has the location and stuff of where the picture was taken. Actually, that doesn't matter. But anyway, it's nice and it was nice and deep, which here on both sides, if you can see in, these are the walls and there's a block void, so it was pretty deep. And here it was about a week ago on January 10th, which as you can see here, it's now a nice reddish color it's gotten shallower it's gotten shallower and you know you can kind of see some fluid as I said I was leaking some fluids so there's some fluid there 
and then here's our last picture and this was taken today of it which as you can see had shrunk dramatically it's still a nice healthy red skin's dry don't pay any attention to that but that's pretty much the video i hope you enjoyed if you have any questions let me know i'm an open book remember to like subscribe and comment down below thanks for watching bye